Marvel Snap is a card game being developed by Second Dinner and Newverse. It is currently available on mobile devices. It will be coming to PC officially in the future. Right now, for the purposes of this video, I'm playing on Blue Stacks on my PC, but a PC client is in the works and it's in the closed beta right now. I've been playing it over the past couple of days. I was already very interested. I'm a huge card game fan. I'm a huge Marvel fan. So naturally the interest was there, but now that I've been playing it, I really enjoy the game. And as such, I wanted to make a how to play video because some of you may not be in the closed beta, but you're interested in how to play. Maybe you're from the future and it's now open to everybody and you're just diving in for the first time. Or maybe you're in the closed beta, but the tutorial wasn't intuitive and you're looking for a second voice. Whatever the case may be, hopefully this video helps you because I'm going to walk through the kind of fundamentals of how to play the game. Now, before we dive into a game and play it, I just want to say that the goal, the way you win in Marvel Snap, is you win two out of three locations. That is the kind of simplest explanation, if you will. So we're gonna jump into a game. You're gonna see some locations. You're gonna see cards and I'm gonna do my best to explain it all as we're going. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play what I call this uh, curve deck. I've been experimenting a lot here just because I wanted to try new things. But we're gonna jump into a game here and we're gonna see some locations on the field. And again, you have to remember that our goal is to win two out of these three locations. Now, you'll see right there it says turn one of six. Most games are exactly six turns long. Now, I say most games because this is the beauty of the game. The locations are not the same every time. The locations are randomized. I believe at launch they're targeting around 60 different locations and you'll get a new location weekly, which is going to be great for the variety. And as such, some locations will shorten the game's length, some will extend it. It's always kind of up for grabs. So on the very first turn, the first location reveals, but you'll notice the second and third, we don't know what they are yet. This will be revealed next turn and this will be revealed in two turns. And so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna play this Medusa here in the center. And the reason that we're doing that is because she has an on reveal effect where she gets a bonus if she is in the center location. And so if I click on her, you can see this is here. Uh, the way the turns work, right? I was running out of time before I could get to this part. The way the turns work is both players play things and then they lock in their choices and then everything kind of resolves at the same time. So my opponent played Squirrel Girl, but I played Medusa. Now, traditionally in this game, you start at one energy per turn and it goes up by one all the way through six. However, I've got an extra energy now and I had one last turn because of this location. This says if you have no cards here, you get plus one energy each turn. So uh, I want to avoid there until the end of the game. This new location revealed and it was Wakanda. Cards here can't be destroyed. So we'll play another card there. Whenever you hear that that buzz, and you'll probably hear it a lot during this, uh, it's because you're running out of time. But because I'm talking so much, uh, that is that is a concern. So once we've hit the third location revealed, we can see this one here is cards that are at this location with no abilities have a bonus in power. So my opponent that played Squirrel Girl, it created these squirrels and they don't have any abilities. And so that's why this one is four power whereas the others are one, it's because of the location. So we're now at the point in the game where I need to start trying to make up some ground because we gotta win two out of the three. Now I'm gonna play these two. Devil Dinosaur here gets plus two power for each card in hand, but these will put more cards back in my hand. So Devil Dinosaur, you're gonna see him go down in power, but he's gonna go right back up because of the way that I've played my cards. And so hopefully that will be of some benefit to us because again at the end of the day well not end of the day end of the game we want to have enough power on two of these three locations now in the event of a tie at a location right so if my opponent has one location and i have one location and the third one is a tie then it's total board power that wins the round and that is very very important to keep track of as well and right now we've got couple of different ways that we could tackle this i feel like our best option though is to play iron man here iron man has an ongoing ability and it is to double our power at this location so if we have a big splashy play at the end then we could get a really big boost so i think we're going to kind of preemptively set that up 
because we've got a large lead here this is our contested one and we're still we're getting the bonus energy that our opponent is not by just abandoning this for right now so we're going to go ahead and lock this in but the cards themselves for the most part they all have a cost this is the energy cost this is what it costs to play them they all have a power and this contributes to your points on the board there are some cards with like negative powers and they do wacky things and then some cards have abilities right that are on reveal some cards have abilities that are ongoing all the time some like quicksilver who i didn't utilize but quicksilver here always starts in your opening hand so you can manipulate your draw uh this next turn i know for a fact i'm going to draw america chavez because her ability says you always draw her on round six and that's also important as well now the decks themselves are pretty small they're only 12 cards we'll cover deck building after this game but it is something to consider i think at this point we can start playing things here because uh, we cap out at six and so now is the time to uh, diversify our stocks and bonds so we just need to figure out what our best way to do that is i think uh, punisher here is good because with ant-man we know they're going to try to fill this up and you know what let's actually let's play angela first because her thing is when you play a card here she gets plus two power and so then we'll go Punisher and Quicksilver because then she'll get some bonuses as well. And then we'll lock this in. But before we lock it in, I'm feeling confident. You can see this big old cube up here with a one. I'm going to snap. This is upping the stakes. So when you win in Marvel Snap, you're not just trying to win the round. You're also trying to win cubes. And you can win in a round between one and eight cubes. And the more cubes you win, the better off you are because that's how you progress up and down the ladder. So right now, the winner of this gets two cubes and the loser loses two cubes. And that's what you use to progress up and down the ladder. I'll cover that after this game as well. All right, so our opponent, they went ahead and they doubled up here, which is a pretty good play. We've got this relatively locked down and we have this at the moment locked down. So we're already winning two out of the three, but we can take this from them. And there is only four cards that can go to location. So this is already full unless they play a card somewhere else that's going to increase the power here. So there are cards that do that. Uh, we should be able to steal this location back by playing America Chavez because she's worth 10, which takes us to 20. But remember, Iron Man's doubling everything. So we're actually going to jump up to 30 with this play. And I'm feeling pretty confident, so I'm going to try to snap again but you can see i've already missed the threshold so the most we can win is four so we're going to go ahead and end the turn you have to snap within certain time periods in the game but we we missed that threshold i'm feeling pretty good about this though so they play angela there in the center which buffs the bishop and they play kazar so they get some buffs around here we see the uh location taken away from us here but we kept this one we stole this one we win two out of three and we get the victory which means we win those four cubes that are up here and that is essentially how you play again this location reveals first then this one then this one the reason that that's important is because sometimes a location for example might say you can't play one cost cards here but if it's not revealed it's not an effect yet so for example if you play a one cost card over here when you can't see it and then later it reveals and it says hey one cost cards can't be played here well you kind of cheated it there's even some locations for example that say like when you play a card here destroy it and so there are benefits to playing to unknown locations as well as benefits to waiting because if this location is unknown for example and you fill it up and then it reveals and it's got a really cool effect like there's one for example that says when you trigger an on reveal ability trigger it twice well then you're going to feel really bad because you might have really good on reveal abilities that are now wasted and you could have exploited that so it's an information game which i think is very very fun the snapping is a form of bluffing sometimes you can get really cocky and snap and your opponent will just concede because if they're not doing well and they don't want to lose a lot of cubes to go down the ladder then sometimes snapping can be a bit of a mind game in and of itself and then there's also a bunch of stuff that just has to do with the randomness of the locations so because your trio is different every time and they're in a different order every time 
it makes every game really feel unique i feel like this game has done a wonderful job of making it feel a bit like gwent or artifact right uh gwent because it's total power and it's best out of three except you're kind of playing all the rounds uh simultaneously as opposed to round one round two round three like you do in gwent uh it's like artifact with the three different lanes right and you're trying to win two out of three but it also reminds me a bit of like old decipher games like lord of the rings or star wars where the locations themselves matter and then it's also just got its own fun twists again with the snapping for stakes and so on and so forth so i really do enjoy the game and this is again very very quick but that is the crux of it so again uh six turns per round is the standard but that fluctuates based on locations win two out of three locations you don't get any bonuses if you win three out of three for example you can certainly do it but it, it doesn't uh change the cubes for example ties go to total power and that that's about it so with that in mind let's go ahead and go from this screen to the deck building screen so i can really quickly cover what deck building is like in marvel snap decks in marvel snap consist of 12 unique cards and outside of that there's really not much else to the deck building when i say unique that means unique to the actual hero for example i own three copies of hawkeye that's because there are art variants in the game and you can see here that i've got them but i could only put one hawkeye in my deck i can't put three copies of hawkeye in because again it's unique to the actual hero and that's again really it as far as the actual deck building goes now there are some general strategies and tips and things like that for example you likely want a number of lower cost cards so that you're more likely to draw them early on with less higher cost cards the game itself also does some pretty interesting things because there are cards with on-reveal effects and ongoing effects that we covered earlier, but there are also some cards that just manipulate when you draw them. That's kind of the beauty of a digital card game. So like Quicksilver here, for example, is the only one cost card that I have in this particular deck, and that's because he starts in my opening hand. And if I know that I'm always going to start with a Quicksilver, then I can focus on trying to run a large number of two drops to ensure that I have something to play on turn two and continue to put units on the board get my power totals high etc etc so this is pretty much it for deck building as far as the card acquisition again it's currently in beta so as soon as things settle down I'll probably do a video on the actual in-game economy the only reason I don't want to do it right now is because again things are a bit subject to change and I'm waiting for the first official season to kick off there's like a mini beta season as I record this but I already know from the developers that some of the stuff that happened for this season will be different for the first real season which I believe starts in June and so I'm kind of waiting for that so look for that video in the future where I cover how to unlock cards what the game economy is like etc etc but uh, this is deck building so we've seen essentially how you navigate a match uh, we have seen deck building i guess one last thing that i can show you is the importance of those cubes that i covered when we were going through the actual game itself when i said hey you can snap and win more cubes and those are how you climb the ladder well this is kind of what i was talking about here you can see i'm on 31 which is not great it's silver but i've been doing more experimenting than just hard climbing and you can see that I'm at four out of 10 cubes. So these are what you need to go up a level. So if I get six more cubes, I go from 31 to 32. And so again, that's why snapping when you have an advantage or retreating if you don't think you can win is so important because you gain or lose cubes as a result of each match and that's how you climb the ladder basically when you win you want to win big and then when you lose you want to lose as little cubes as possible so this is the ranked system again as of right now now this could also change once we're out of the beta i do know that the developers have kind of talked about a no stakes mode and the ability to challenge friends while they are not in the game right now as i record this they are something that they have been talking about so it will matter less in those instances however if you're just joining the closed beta or if it's still like this by the time the game launches this is what i meant when i was talking about the cubes during the course of the game and uh, that's it hopefully this gave you enough to kind of understand marvel snap if you were just looking for a video explaining it and you're not in the closed beta or maybe you're in the closed beta but the tutorial didn't fully explain things or 
was a little bit convoluted hopefully this helped you out but if you made it this far thank you for watching as always and i hope to catch you again watching another video